Hi, in this video I want to take a closer look at John Rose. John Rose is a vegan conspiracy theorist. He doesn't really claim to have any special qualifications or history apart from being a world-class athlete and competitive tennis player. I've never seen any evidence, but it's not exactly an extraordinary claim. He's not pretending to have been a professional or to have won any tournaments, there's nothing really to investigate in that regard. I did find this amusing paragraph from a biography which I'll read now. John received a BBA in the science of money from SWTSU in 1976. Since money makes the world go round, John has been better trained as a scientist than doctors and biologists. Doctors do not study food, nor do they study the concept of totality, and biology is not an exact science. I don't really know if John wrote that about himself, but it certainly sounds like something he'd say. If you break it down, the logic is pretty hard to follow. The whole thing really hangs on the adage, money makes the world go round, as being literally true, and taking proverbs and witticisms as being irrefutable statements of fact is certainly a habit of his. Everyone knows we are what we eat. Everyone knows you are what you eat. Now, when was the last time you heard someone say that? If I had to summarize the John Rose philosophy, it's something like this. Don't heat your food and don't eat your food because John Rose wants everyone to drink just juice raw. So every video I do on my channel is geared to motivate you guys to take a solid food vacation. It doesn't matter what you call it, solid food vacation, juice fasting, juice feasting or any other name, John Rose is advocating drinking juice as the solution to your health problems. If that sounds far-fetched to you, it should. There's no good reason to think that having a machine chew up your food for you is going to make a huge difference to your life or health. And there's also no good reason to think that cooking your food will make it unhealthy. Even more bizarrely, John Rose thinks that not only is cooking your food bad for your health, it is no less than the root of all evil. I'm convinced that cooking our food is the root to all evil. John Rose is deep in a conspiracy medicine quagmire. We've got biophotons, urine therapy, breatharianism, chemotherapy and vaccine nonsense. This just goes on and on. John's even into Holocaust denialism. And, of course, we've got some lymph system madness that I think he's pulled straight from Robert Morse. I don't have time to talk about even a fraction of what's on his channel, so I'm going to just take a closer look at some of the most egregious nonsense I've watched so far. Plants not only can communicate, but they can actually read our thoughts. And what's interesting about this experience is that the Royal Society refused to publish those results because it would have led to further research as to why these plants were able to do this. Why, could, why can plants do that? Obviously I cut this clip, but there's nothing really deceptive going on here. John really thinks that plants can read our thoughts. I can only assume that the Royal Society refused to publish this research because they already knew that plants don't have brains and that brains are required for thinking. So whose research is John describing here? Let's take a look at the research that Bose did. Sir Jagadish? <laughs> Sir, Sir, Sir Dagadish Bose? Chandra Bose. Jagadish Chandra Bose conducted his research on plants over a hundred years ago. John obviously doesn't understand anything about this research because he claimed that Bose used video cameras in his experiments, cameras that wouldn't be invented until decades later. As if mind reading plants weren't bad enough, John also thinks that it might be possible for the human body to perform a kind of nuclear fusion, which he describes for us here. That our body can take regular f minerals from the food, like potassium, and mag magnesium and silica and then combine that with free floating forms of hydrogen, oxygen and carbon and transmute and create calcium. That's the, that's the ongoing theory. And this biological transmutation is also supposed to be the basis behind what some people believe is possible uh, and I'm talking about breatharianism. Breatharians are frauds who claim to survive by breathing alone. I didn't think it was possible to make their claim seem more ridiculous, but John has managed it here. The kind of energy required to transmute nuclei by adding protons is only going to be found in a particle accelerator, nuclear weapon, or the center of the sun. Back to biology now. What does John know about amino acids? Now, two amino acids also have sulfur, and two amino acids also have iodine. But nonetheless, the bulk of our amino acids come from those four main elements. John's wrong again. None of the amino acids contain iodine. 
and I'm not even sure I can trace this claim back to anything logical. Moving on, what can John tell us about every fruitarian's favourite ape, the bonobo? In this video, I'm going to take a closer look at our closest genetic relative, the bonobos, formerly known as the pygmy chimpanzees. We share 99.5% of their genetic makeup. Bonobos are closer to us than they are chimpanzees. And what do bonobos eat? 98% of their diet is fruit. 2% comes from veggies, or 1% to 2%, and less than 1% comes from insects. And we didn't get far here. Bonobos and common chimpanzees are very similar, and they share about 99.6% of their DNA with each other. Meanwhile, humans are about as genetically similar to bonobos as they are chimps, sharing around 98.7% of their DNA with each of them. The claim that bonobos are more similar to humans than common chimpanzees is absolutely false. On the point of diet, John is once again wrong. Certainly, bonobos eat a large amount of fruit, but I've never seen an estimate as high as 98%. John mentioned that bonobos eat insects, but they also hunt and eat monkeys. We've seen some of the more amusing mistakes, but the worst thing about John is that he is also sharing information that is dangerous. Do you believe AIDS is sexually transmitted? Do you believe that AIDS is transmitted with dirty needles? Do you believe AIDS in Africa and people are dying from AIDS? If you believe in any of those false beliefs, that's called conventional wisdom. John's made the classic mistake of confusing AIDS with HIV. Human immunodeficiency virus is the virus that can eventually lead to acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. As usual, John is criticizing the conventional model of a disease without ever understanding it. In fact, John doesn't really believe in infectious diseases at all. Germs and viruses are not the cause of disease. Genetics is not the cause of your problems. Old age has nothing to do with getting sick unless we're making mistakes. Remember, everything we do affects us and then those effects accumulate and are reflected in the condition of our four current status factors. In these videos, my aim is to be as convincing as possible in a short time. So if you're a fan of John Rose, let me appeal to your logic. How many times have you caught a cold from someone who you know already has a cold? How many times have you caught food poisoning and someone who ate the same food also caught it? Whether you believe in vaccinations or chickenpox parties, it seems hard to refute the fact that diseases spread between people in a clearly visible way, regardless of their diet. Huge epidemics, both historical and contemporary, like Black Death, smallpox, cholera and Spanish flu, aren't correlated with any change in the amount of fruit consumption or juicing. As usual, I find myself constrained by time. I've tried to dash through a few of the most stupid things that John Rose has said because I want people to think twice about his advice. It's actually quite hard to contradict someone who makes so many claims that are so far removed from genuine scientific debate. I'll probably make a part two for this video at some point in the future. If you've watched my video and you're a fan of John Rose, leave a comment and tell me what I got wrong. I'll put it in part two. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe. I made this video in response to two requests, so let me know what you'd like me to look at next and I'll put it on the list. There are two things we need to understand. Number one is that there are two ways to make a mistake. And I've identified five main mistakes that are making our food unnatural. Maybe that's what's doing it, because I have at least five erections a day minimum. I can't help it, I'm a man. Remember the six blind men from India? They find the elephant. He talks about these four stages of spirituality that he based on Professor James Fowler's six stages of spiritual growth. And in this video, I'd like to take a closer look at 12 of my most important stories. And I call them Rose's 12 stories. The number one story is the definitive answer to three of the most important questions that we face as a species. There are two groups of needs we must satisfy. There are 12 basic essential needs. And I've gone over this many times in my other videos. I'll put a link down below. We've got to get to the numbers. We've got to reach that magic number where things can change exponentially. Two energy mistakes and two plumbing mistakes. And there are internal and external energy mistakes and plumbing mistakes. 
And in today's video, I'm gonna take a closer look at the top eight minerals in the human body. I'm also gonna take a look at the top eight elements in the Earth's crust. I'm also gonna take a closer look at seven major components of weight and four main elements that make up 96% of the human body. And in this video, I'm gonna take a closer look at six main reasons why some people actually feel better or even feel energized when they eat dead animal flesh. It's what got us in trouble. It's piece number nine in my special teaching tool where I identified 281 pieces. <laughs> Just look at the ultimate solution playlist and the ultimate schematic to understand what piece number nine is. It's our neocortex and our reptilian brain combined. 